Ta da! Why is it so yellow? Oh my god! You've got one week until your board exams. What should you do? How do you even start? And how should you revise your subjects? This time period you're given could either make or break your exam experience depending on what you choose to do in it. So, I've come to you with a vlog that I filmed a day before my A-level biology exam to show you what I did and to share some tips on how you could utilize this time period as well. My name is Habiba and I went through plenty of these exams so I could say I have some sort of experience with this pre-exam dilemma. So I hope this video is helpful for you. Let's get started. Good morning. This is the current situation of my desk. It's a mess. It's currently 7 35 it's sunday look at this my calendar is like almost done and we're here which is very surprising i've come a long way uh ever since i started studying for the subject back here paper five paper four okay let's start with a quick cleanup first first and foremost for any of these tips to help you out you have to remove all distractions so turn off your phone, put it on do not disturb mode, remove all electronic devices out of your reach, stay alone in your room and close the door, shut yourself off from the entire world. You quite literally do not have any time to waste. So as you've seen from the calendar, I have exactly two days left. So very limited time and that's why I put my phone on focus mode so that I could avoid any distractions. So if you waste like a single hour, You'll end up regretting it and this feeling of regret will put you out of the mood of studying and you have to get yourself back up again and this could take a lot of time or you could just end up procrastinating for the entire day. So just avoid all of this from the very start. Next up, make a plan or a schedule. Take 15 minutes to just sit down with yourself and plan what you're going to be doing next. This helps you avoid two things. The first being not knowing what to do next when you finish a task and just end up wasting time instead of studying. And it helps you avoid revising things that you already revised before and wasting time on that. And overall, just helps you feel less overwhelmed with the amount of things that you have to do to revise a single subject. You have to also bear in mind that you are a human and you can't revise the entire 24 hours that you have in your day. Give yourself breaks in between study sessions. What I like to do personally is to study for an entire hour with focus and then take a 10 minute break and keep doing that until I finish a big chunk of tasks. Then I take like a, an hour break or so to just chill or take a nap, which I'll get to later. So what is the plan for today and tomorrow? What am I going to do with these two days? Originally, I was going to do one day for paper four revision, one day for paper five revision. Uh, and if you don't know the difference, really, paper four contains a lot more uh, of the information in the syllabus, while paper five is more, like, way more practical. It, it barely contains information from the syllabus. I found that an optimal way I could divide both days is I make half of today for paper four, half of today for paper five, and same thing for tomorrow. But tomorrow really depends on how today goes. I just feel like this is a a better way to divide both days while also getting the most out of both of them. I'm gonna leave the morning for paper 5 revision and then the afternoon for paper 4 revision and sleep as early as possible, give myself rests and all that stuff. I, I really do not want to burn myself out, especially in these two days, so I'm gonna leave it as chill as I can. Doing a realistic timetable will also help you avoid burnout, which is definitely something that you don't want during your last days before the board exam. This is how my schedule is gonna be for today. These are all the sessions I'm gonna do for paper five. And then whatever I do after that, I most probably just eat with my family, do some chores, all that stuff, um, and then get back to studying paper four. Now to actually execute your study plan properly, you have to enter with the right mindset because everything changes with the way you think. The way you study, depends on the way you think. So if you enter with a very negative mindset, with the mindset of someone who does not want to study, does not feel like studying, even if you have the best study schedule in the entire world, you'll just end up not studying. You have to keep reminding yourself of why you're doing this, the end goal. 
you have to remind yourself that you have very limited time left. Then you can do whatever you want afterwards, right? Use that time wisely, you know? Actually put in the time and effort and energy. Put in the focus. You have to focus. You have to keep reminding yourself, I have to focus right now. You have to remind yourself of the, the amount of time you put the entire year for the subject. The amount of time the entire year. The amount of classes you attended. The amount of assignments you turned in. The amount of papers you solved. Remind yourself of the effort. Do you want all of this to go to waste? Do you want to retake? Who's going to study for you? No one. You have to do it for yourself. You're doing this for yourself because you deserve it. You deserve it for everything you've put in. This also goes hand in hand with people that don't have motivation. It's completely fine if you don't have motivation during that time period. We are human after all. You have to have a disciplined mindset as well. So even if you don't feel like doing it, force yourself to actually do the tasks that you set for yourself in your plan. Force yourself even if you don't feel like it. Now for the way that I like to revise, there are two main methods that I use. The first one being, I revise my mistakes, my past paper mistakes. This is my paper 5 booklet, I'm gonna show you something. And I've done most of these actually, I've done all up until 2019, so that's almost half of the workbook. My plan for any sort of revision for paper 5 is to go through all the papers I solved and all my mistakes and make notes in my handy biology notebook. Usually I'll have that written in a notebook. If I don't, I'll analyze why I got this question wrong and then I'll write why in the notebook so that I can revise it all throughout this week. But this is mostly done throughout the year as well. So I'll just read that notebook that has all of my mistakes in it and it makes revision so much easier. And it also helps you focus on what you did wrong and not just all the other easy, simple questions, that's just a waste of time in that stage of revision. Um, as you can see, I really did make use of this. This was originally my math practice notebook for AS, but then I, I ended up not practicing in that notebook uh, because it was, I don't know, it, it just did not feel right to practice in that one, so I just didn't. But yeah, I ended up making use of it. So if you solve papers and you don't analyze or go through your mistakes again you are doing it wrong you're not getting the most out of your past papers look at this this is an example of when i solve a question and i get it wrong i technically did not get it wrong i got a six out of eight which is pretty good but my method was wrong and i knew my method was wrong it sounded so weird and out of place and i did not revise the experiment in so, in so long so it just sounded weird and you know in the wrong order so like if i was the examiner i would most probably give myself a two out of six um so i revised it and i made notes on those sticky notes as revision and not only for this experiment but for other experiments related like this one uh i'll be taking those sticky notes and sticking them onto my notebook so that um, I'm able to revise them more easily and, you know, right before the exam, instead of taking this entire booklet. Look how satisfying this is. Whoa. Oh yeah, I glued this on. Because, like, sticky notes don't work that well, unless they're, like, extremely new and bought from a good place. So I just stick them with glue. Ta-da! Now I don't have to rewrite information. Very helpful. The other method I do is to skim through past papers that I did not solve yet or did not have the time to solve. So by skimming, I mean I'll have the question paper and the marking scheme open. So I'll just read the question, answer in my head, and then look at the marking scheme. If I got the question wrong, I'll write the correct answer in my mistakes log. My biggest goal is to at least finish going through the papers I solved before. That is my main goal. And then whatever comes after that, it depends on the time that I have left. After I'm done with this, I'm going to go back and do more planning. But for now, simple planning is enough, really. I just need to start doing my work. Use that knowledge of your past paper mistakes to revise the topics that you're very weak at. So if you see a trend, you keep getting the same topic wrong every single time, just go and revise that topic specifically. And the way that you could do it is by watching YouTube videos or by watching people 
solving that same question on YouTube or by asking your teacher. If you don't have a teacher to ask, you can ask your friends or you could ask people on Reddit or Discord. There are many people that could help you out if you don't know how a certain question is solved or have a certain concept that is not clear. You could then also solve more questions on this specific topic if you are very weak at it or read online notes on the same topic. To me, reading the textbook at the very end is very overwhelming because there's so much information. But if the textbook is very easy to read for you, then you could do that as well. You know, the best reason why this method is really good for final revision is because while flipping through the past papers, you are bound to come across questions that you know you're not that good at or questions that you don't like to solve a lot. Um, and this gives you the perfect opportunity to focus on this specific topic or these specific kinds of questions. So if they do pop up in your exam, you have a higher chance of scoring well and you're less anxious or less nervous while solving them. And you'll, you basically have a better time during your exam. And so you're focusing on your weak points. You're not really revising the entire syllabus, which is like most probably a waste of time sometimes and requires a lot of time and effort and it's just not it when you have two days left until your exam. This is a first hand example and um, I finally watched a video about this topic like the only reason I was able to solve this question correctly is because I solved so many of the same question before but I never really understood how this concept works and I just found out right now. During that very last week, I tried to solve as many past papers as I can, and that is by skimming or by revising my mistakes. That just shows you the actual exam structure and gets you straight to the point to how your exam might come out. If you just read notes passively, that just is a waste of time. But in general, just keep testing yourself with questions. My original goal was to actually finish eight years of past papers, but I just could not. That was too much. Uh, so at least I finished the four years I was planning on finishing. Um, and I'm just going to skim through these years as paper five revision. And that would be absolutely enough. And I just need to go through my mistakes and add up to my knowledge by skimming through the rest of the papers that I did not solve yet. So for now, let's start our very first session. Oh, why is it so yellow? Okay, there. Last but not least, take power naps, give yourself a break, and actually sleep for a bit. Like 20 to 40 minutes or so. Studies have actually proven that taking short power naps gives you the full benefit of napping without feeling groggy when you wake up. And it just overall boosts your memory and helps you retain the information that you studied all throughout your study periods. So, and you just feel refreshed afterwards and ready to start all over again. It's just, it's great, you know, because you might end up sleeping way more than you're supposed to. So you have to also be disciplined in that. Set a timer for like 40 minutes or 50 minutes and tell yourself if this timer rings, I have to wake up, I have to get up. If you're just not experienced with that and you know you'll end up sleeping for more than you should, you're just better off continuing to study and then sleeping later. I'm craving a good, good nap. So that's why I'm going to work hard for it and then take a nap. Let's get started. Of course, all of this goes hand in hand with you taking care of yourself. If you have to, you know, stay hydrated, just take care of yourself in general because at the end of the day, getting good grades does not equal to neglecting yourself. You're doing this for yourself. It's currently 10.15 and I'm taking my break right now. I kind of went over the time I was supposed to take as studying, but um, yeah, we're done with a lot of work. This is the to-do list I made. We're done 2022. I still have a lot more actually. Uh, 2021 is not even done and I have two more years, but I did a lot of work actually like a lot of notes a lot yeah until here this is this was done yesterday pretty cool but yeah i'm gonna take a break and then we're gonna be back thank you so much for watching this video if you found it helpful make sure to like comment share subscribe all of that stuff 
uh, if you have any video recommendations that I should do next, also comment it down below because I do read the comments. Also, the results for the A-level biology exam that I had been studying for during this vlog is coming out tomorrow. So I'm going to most probably upload a reaction video. If I did, then the video should be found somewhere here. Thank you so much for watching again. And I really appreciate your support. See you next time. I'm finally done with all those. And yeah, then I'll move on to paper for revision.